so much uh, and, and good afternoon. What an honor it is for me as the executive director for VASCD um, to, to moderate today. Uh, you are not here to hear, to, to listen to me. So I'm gonna get as quickly as I can uh, to introducing Richard so that we can hear uh, from him, his experience, his expertise, um, and, and maybe we can push him for some predictions. We'll see uh, how, how that goes. Um, as Gina stated, my name is Chris Jones. I am the executive director for VASCD. VASCD is the sponsoring organization for uh, today's chat and our discussion series on artificial intelligence. It is my privilege, it is my pleasure, and it is my great honor to introduce today's um, guest speaker. Richard Collada is an internationally recognized innovator and learning designer. As the CEO of the now merged ASCD and ISTE, and as an affiliate leader, I'm hoping at some point we're going to have a singular name uh, that, that we can identify the organization as. Uh, Collada has focused on supporting education change makers to create equitable and engaging learning experiences for students around the world. Prior to joining ASCD and ISTE, Collada served as, the, served as the Chief Innovation Officer for the state of Rhode Island. Richard was appointed by President Obama as the Executive Director of the Office of Educational Technology for the U.S. Department of Education and is the author of Digital for Good, Raising Kids to Thrive in an Online World. He began his career in the classroom as a high school teacher and has coached educators and national leaders around the world on making learning more. Richard holds a bachelor's degree in Spanish teaching and a master's in educational psychology and technology from Brigham Young University. Welcome, Richard. It is a, an honor to be with you here today. Welcome. Thank you, Chris. Awesome. Great to see you. And it's always fun uh, uh, to get to hang out with our uh, my friends in Virginia, um, being uh, that I, I live in Virginia, my kids go to school in Virginia. I serve on the governor's AI uh, advisory group for Virginia, so the, so a lot of a uh, lot of connections here. So I'm I'm just I'm just always thrilled when I can uh, when I can talk to to, to friends here. Um, I thought um, what we would do is uh, well, a couple things. First of all, I. I um, I, I do. I will share some some ideas with you. As as you know, I have plenty that I can can share about this topic, and so I'll share my screen in a second, and I'll I'll, I'll share some some thoughts. But this is one of those topics where a lot of people there's you know a lot of people are talking, a lot of people are sharing, and and I want to make sure we're also having a chance to listen. And so uh, I really hope in the way that we've structured this that there'll be chances that you can jump in and ask questions. Uh, give comments. Um, you know, let us know what you're doing. Let us know what's working, what's not. No topic is off limits. We can. We the, the goal. This is this should feel informal. It should sort of feel like we're all just sitting around. You know, drinking a cup of hot chocolate together or pumpkin spice because that's that time of year that everything has to be pumpkin spice. Drinking a cup of pumpkin spice hot chocolate and uh, and just talking about what you're seeing with AI, what's working, where you need help. Um, so that's kind of how we'll we'll go about it if 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 that works. Um, one of the things that if I, if we can do it very quickly, uh, and this is partially to test out Zoom and make sure it's working, but partially for me, uh, is if we could, it, it, those of you that are participating, if you could just quickly under um, uh, 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 the chat, just tell us um, what what your what your role is. Tell us your 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 name and what your role is. Uh, actually, your name will come up, but just tell us what your role. Because I want to get a sense: Are we? Do we have largely? Do we have teachers? Do we have instructional coaches? Do we have leaders? You know, kind of who's on? Uh, and just just jump in really quickly and and share with us. Thank you. And I know it's going to go fast, and that's okay. I have a AI bot sitting next to me that's going to read all of this and uh, make sense out of it. Good. So we have some instructional coaches, curriculum development, a lot of good curriculum development, instructional coaches. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, some some tech uh, some tech leaders. Great university professor on here. We'll, we'll I'll I'll try to I should get up my tie and, and behave here. If we got university professors online here, um, awesome. What a wow. What a great group of people. I'm thrilled. Uh, um, good. So so uh, uh, as we try to uh, uh, jump in here, there's a lot of different viewpoints. And we hope to hear this. Oh, some some uh, librarians as well. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Um, so one of the things, if I can get access to share my screen, um, that would be awesome. And if not, I can I can act out pretty good. So uh, no no worries if we can't do that. Um, but what I thought we would do uh, is an oh and wow, Jamie, that's interesting. An online sub uh, for for uh, as well as a, a classroom teacher. That's great. Um, and an SBIT, we have an SBIT from Fairfax County joining. Oh, gosh, you guys are great. Okay, so I am going to. I now we're going to share my screen. Um, and, uh, let me see if I can get that to work. Oops. Let's get the, let's get it lined up. Right. 
Um, so uh, here we go. Uh, what I want to do, and, I, and I'm using a slightly different feature some of you may be familiar with in Zoom, um, so that I can, I'm going to try to do a demo in a minute. And so I'm, I'm using a feature where I'm sharing a portion of my screen so that I can uh, still see to do the demo. So if it, if the, if it looked a little off for a second there, that was, that was the reason. Um, great to, great to, great to be here. As, as, as Chris already mentioned, uh, you know, our big news is that the ISTE and ASCD are coming together. Um, Chris and, uh, uh, Ron, uh, remind me that they'd been working together long before we ever decided to come together at the national level. So technically, I guess we owe it to them for thinking of this idea and we appreciate that. Um, what I thought we'd do in talking about, um, about, uh, AI, um, uh, this AI, it, it's a complicated topic, right? It's fun. I, you'll see, I think it's, it's very fun, but there's some complexities here. One of them is this. Uh, it's hard to know what AI is and what it isn't, right? What, what includes AI? So there's some, some you know, uh, division leaders that I've talked to. They're like, we're banning AI. And I'm like, all right, y'all sit around the table here and I'm going to put up a bunch of different AI tools or a bunch of different tools, you know, digital tools and put a hundred dollars on the table. And if you can tell me which are AI and which aren't, you get the hundred dollars and no division in the, in the state is going to be able to do it. My, my point is that it's not so easy. You know, chat GPT is one type of AI. Uh, and it's a little bit like the early days of the internet where, where, you know, it was like AOL is AOL, the internet is the internet AOL chat GPT, of course is AI, but there's all kinds of other tools that are using AI that you don't even necessarily think about as being AI tools. Uh, if any, you know, I was in a, uh, talking to a district the other day and said, we have banned, uh, AI I said, oh, interesting. Are you using, um, uh, uh, you know, the Google suite, you know, Google docs? Well, yeah, of course you use the Google docs. Well, you're using AI, right? So, 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 so under peeling the onion back a little bit and understanding what's AI and what isn't is kind of a fun, uh, you know, a, a bit of a fun topic. We have a course that we offer and I'm going to pull just one section out of it here. Uh, we offer a course called AI intelligence, AI explorations, uh, for educators, dive deeper into it. But our opening activity for this course uh, is this activity we call AI or not. Okay. So we're going to run through this real quick and you're going to just vote, just do quick up and down vote on your, you don't even have to use the zoom tools, just, you know, kind of do it in, in front of your own screen. And, and then uh, you can, you can tell us at the end that you got them all right, but we're going to go really quick through. So the first one, and, and it's really simple. All we do, I'm going to show a tool and you're going to say, is it AI or is it not AI? Right? Easy enough, easy rules. Okay. Here we go. Google maps. AI or not, and we'll put not yet because everything is going to be AI at some point. But we'll just we'll just say it. okay. So Google Maps, ready? We got some thumbs up there. Google Maps, not yet. Okay, virtual assistants, Siri, etc. Thumbs up. Yes, that is AI. Okay, we, we got that one. I saw a bunch of thumbs up on that. Okay, smart thermostats, right? A smart whatever your flavor of smart is that AI or not AI? AI, right? How about smart watches? Smart watches, AI. Okay, not AI yet. Okay, all right. How about an autonomous uh, autonomous car? This one, every this is a freebie. You're all you're all gonna get this. An autonomous car. Yeah, but I saw all the thumbs up. I, I I love this how we can see the thumbs going up there. All AI. Yes, indeed, it's AI. Uh, how about uh, how about VR? You know, three D immersive VR. Uh, is that AI or not AI? Nope, not AI yet. Uh, okay. Um, how about uh, Facebook? Facebook. That's you know, is that AI? Yes, indeed. All the facial recognition, so it knows who to put in what feed. That is all. That is all AI. How about a vacuum? We'll end on a fun one. Is a vacuum uh, AI? Not seeing many thumbs up. It is in fact AI. Robo vacuums. If you have like a Roomba or whatever, that is in fact uh, AI driving it. So my point out of all of this. Thanks. That was fun. My point out of all of this is just AI is embedded in all kinds of things. It's everywhere. And, and uh, we often don't even know uh, where it is. And so we have to be careful about making these sweeping statements of whether we're in or out on AI because uh, it shows up in a lot, of, uh, a lot of different places. Now, I wanna use my, you know, my, my few minutes that I have with you today, a bit of your, your precious time um, to, to pose a, a question that I hope we all ask, which is how can we learn to be amazing humans in an AI world, right? That's the question that I think we should be uh, asking, uh, not uh, not some of the other you know rabbit holes that we get stuck in, but really AI is here. It's here to stay. We know that it's here. How can we become amazing humans and help younger, uh, smaller, amazing humans in training uh, learn to become amazing humans in, a, in an AI world? Um, 
here are some other examples of places that we we see AI already starting to have a major impact on improving uh, improving the world. Okay, the first one, you know, maybe a little tongue in cheek on the first one. It's very helpful to be able to to help us uh, with with answers to things that we need. So, in this first one, I asked it to write an app that would help me predict whether there would be a snow day. You've, you've been hearing all the news in Virginia that we're going to have actually have snow days this year. So, so I said, write an app for me, write the code for app that will tell me the probability whether tomorrow will be a snow day in uh, Virginia school. And it has the working code right there for that app. That's pretty awesome. I had another uh, a prompt and I said, you know, have it uh, tell me a joke. And I actually, the full prompt was tell me a joke uh, uh, for teachers. Uh, and so uh, it, it was a, it's a science joke. And I know it's a little small and hard to read. So I got to read it out here. It says, uh, here's the joke for you. Why don't scientists trust atoms? And the answer is because they make up everything. <laughs> okay, yeah. So maybe it's not so good at telling jokes. We'll, we'll work on that. The third one I thought you think was funny for the teachers that are in the in the in the room here. I said get, it said give me an excuse for not having my homework done on time, and it's a great excuse. It's actually really good. It says I hope this finds you well. I regrettably wasn't able to do the assignment right. So we have the ability to use uh, AI to generate text, but AI can do far more than text generation. Uh, this is a really cool example here of a tool that's being used, and it actually looks at Facebook. So pictures that you post, uh, I think it'll actually play a little video of this. Uh, you can, it, it's pictures that you that people post of tourism where they've taken pictures of animals, and then it goes through and identifies with unique fingerprints of each animal and can help track migration of endangered species. It turns out it is far more accurate at tracking the movement than the previous way where somebody sits out in the field with a notebook and tracks whether you know the zebras are moving by because it's able to detect where those actual those, those animals are. We have AI that can uh, smell our breath. And you might think why that would matter, but it turns out that it can detect from our breath whether you have a cancer or another illness, right? Maybe even what type of coffee you like, but that's a separate thing. So it helps us be able to have, you know, incredible, uh, uh, you know, medical benefits. Uh, in uh, uh, there are a number of countries that are using um, uh, AI uh, for for tracking uh, missing missing people, missing children, and and uh, in 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 China, I was just visiting China recently. Uh, they found nearly 4,000 missing or abducted children because they're able to use uh, AI to, 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 to recognize uh, 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 the children. Uh, there's even an AI service that allows children to have a conversation with their great-great-grandparents after they're no longer alive. So they can get advice uh, from a great-great-grandparent. Honestly, I can't decide if that's really cool or just really creepy. We'll leave that up to you to decide. But it's really interesting, uh, you know, the idea of me being able to tell dad jokes to an unlimited uh, generations in, in, in the future is a little bit irresistible. So so there's these ways that we're using it. And and just in case, just in case you're worried about that, that some of these may not seem really impactful, uh, there is an AI tool. I'm not making this up. There's an AI tool that will find Wally. You can put any Where's Waldo uh, book under the camera and it will in two seconds go and drop the little finger uh, on, on where, where Waldo is. And so we have, uh, we have Wal Waldo will never be lost again, uh, thanks to AI. Um, but obviously what we really want to be talking about here is how can these things impact and improve uh, and improve learning? Um, one thing I just want to do quickly, I want to, I want to, I want to um, share the uh, uh, sort of two flavors of AI that might be helpful. We have um, a, a flavor of AI that I'm going to call a generalist AI. Generalist AI is like the, you know, it's like it's like uh, ChatGPT, it's like uh, uh, you know Google Bard if you've used that, where it sucks the whole internet, all the all the interwebs, and then it uh, uh, tries to come up with an answer uh, based on on all of that knowledge. Uh, that's one uh, one 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 option. Uh, there is another approach, though, uh, to to AI, which you're going to see is going to start becoming more and more uh, common, which is what we call specialist AI. And specialist AI is not sucking the whole interwebs down, but it's actually taking a very curated set of information and providing uh, details uh, about. Uh, answers and guidance based on just that information. So, for example, if you are, uh, you know, teaching a specific subject, um, you might have a specialized AI around that subject uh, that's helping you make decisions 
uh, and learn more about that from a very curated, uh, thoughtful set of resources. Um, we thought that was kind of interesting. And so uh, at the, the, the ISTE ASCD team um, decided that we would actually create a specialized AI tool that we're just prototyping. And I'm going to show it to you here because your friends, uh, my team will probably freak out that I'm showing a tool that is is completely in, in beta uh, test rate mode right now, but that's okay. It'll If it doesn't work, we'll all just have a good laugh. Um, so let me share my screen. So I don't know if you can see this, this is called Stretch AI. This is our new tool. Um, sorry, I, gotta, I can't think and type at the same time. Oops, let's see if I can get in there. There we go. Okay, so no, don't remember the password. So here we go. So welcome to Stretch AI. So what we did with Stretch AI is we took the last 40 years of content created by ISTE and ASCD. So uh, ISTE, if you if you subscribe to EL or the magazine or all the guides that we put out on the ISTE side, many of which are not open on the on the available on the open you know internet, and we've trained this model around. Uh, that uh, that uh, that content. So somebody, if you don't mind, it, so so this is, by the way, to be clear, this is trained to be a teacher coach. So it's trained to help support teachers in uh, in the work that they uh, that they do. Um, if you have a chance, would, did somebody throw in the chat a question that we might want to throw in here and just see how it works? Uh, and we'll and we'll take a shot. So a question that a teacher might ask. I'll put in one just to get started while you're thinking. Um, I'll do. Um, you know, since we're, well, since since we got some ISTE folks on the call, just say, um, uh, can you tell me, is he said, actually, no, that one's better. I'm going to pull that one. What's the best way to, to personalize technology? And by the way, um, we're still training this thing. And as I've said, um, you know, training, uh, training a chatbot is a little bit like um, training a puppy, right? Sometimes it works really well and sometimes it pees on the floor. And so we're going to try it and we're going to see how it works. So here's this one. We're going to say, how does it, I'm going to hide that, the chat there. Best way to personalize learning using technology. And we'll see what we get. There we go. So we have an answer. Uh, best way to personalize is to provide students with choice and opportunity for voice and choice in their learning. This can be done by using digital tools and resources that allow students to customize the learning experience based on their interests, preference, and learning needs. Not bad. We could keep reading, but but not bad. But let me tell you what we've done here, which is a little bit different than what you'll see on some other tools, is we give you the sources. And we say, these are the curated tools. These are the curated documents that were used in creating this answer. And you can see that some of these came from an ISTE for students uh, uh, document. Uh, looks like, not surprising, these tend to be more on the ISTE side. Although here's one from ASCD uh, Educational Leadership, uh, uh, an article that was was in there. So you get a sense of where where they where they come from, right? Um, so, so these are a great, uh, you know, it, it, I, I believe tools like this are really going to be the the type of thing that we see that are that are really critical for helping shape the future of learning because they won't be generic; they will be trained to give very specific uh, answers based on on uh, uh, on on what the what the needs uh, what the needs are. Um, let me just throw one more in here real quick, and then we'll move on. How about this one? Um, there's some great. Uh, uh, oh, Tim, Tim, we got to pick on you. What's useful um, assessment? Here we go. I'm, I'm dropping this one in. Um, oh, you were asking. Sorry, I think Tim. I think you were maybe asking me this question. I am going to drop it into 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 uh, Stretch AI and see how it uh, how it responds. Um, let's just see what it comes up with there. There we go. And and I'm, I'm going to push it and and see if it comes up with anything uh, anything good. It may or may not. We'll see what we can what we can do. Um, so a useful assessment revision creativity project could be a rubric that evaluates students' ability to think critically, problem solve, communicate their ideas effectively. The rubric could include uh, originality, flexibility, fluency, think outside the box. Yeah, not bad. It's I'd give it a you know seven out of ten on that answer. Um, but it gives you a whole bunch of of uh, additional documents, more on the ASCD side now that you can uh, that you can jump into. So um, so the point here, I, I think, is that we're going to start to see these tools that are really helpful in uh, in preparing in, in helping us as as uh, as educators uh, do our uh, 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 do do our work, and that's what's really exciting to me is the is the future of uh, of of support for educators. There's this there's there's this. Um, you know, there's some narrative out there about about AI, you know, replacing teachers and and you know everybody likes to do that. The sky's unfalling thing, when, you know, sky's falling when when uh, when a uh, uh, new technology comes out. 
I am not worried about that. In fact, if anything, I think the role of educators uh, uh, is, is only more critical in this world. But what's great about this is that it provides us a chance to offload some of the work that we don't want to do to a tool that potentially can do some of it a little bit better. Um, and so, you know, as I was talking, I was talking to uh, uh, my my kid's principal here, um, just just down the road at our school here, uh, and I said, "How are you using AI?" And she said, "I uh, I don't write a single email anymore. Uh, I draft my emails get drafted by uh, by by uh, an AI tool. I tweak them, but it saved me so much time that I now have more time to engage with teachers and students. Right? That's a great example of a way that uh, that we could be thinking about using using AI. So I'm, I'm very excited about that." The number one question, I should get it out of the way in case it comes up, in case anybody is thinking about it is, how do we keep kids from cheating, right? If we're using AI, how do we keep kids from cheating? And um, my, my answer, which which I which I, I will probably, you know, lose some friends here by saying this, but it's the truth. So we'll, we'll just go with it is, if we're worried about cheating, if we're worried about cheating, uh, the problem is probably not AI, it's probably that we don't have very good assessments. And so we should use this as a chance to reset and rethink how we're assessing student learning. And we really need to take advantage of this. As in, honestly, if the, if the only thing AI does in learning is blow up assessments, then it will have been worth it in, you know, in, in spades because it will be a chance for us to rethink. Uh, and yeah, of course, if the assessment is, you know, here is a question that is that it would be very easy to copy and paste an answer from the from the internet, you know, to to then yes, it's going to it, it's going to uh, uh, be be difficult to uh, uh, to uh, to have that have any validity. But that assessment probably didn't have much validity to begin with. So so that's sort of what we should be uh, we should be thinking about. Um, I want to share one more one more um, I want to share a resource and then and then a, a set of skills that I think we need to be focusing on. And let's go through some of these great questions that have been coming up. Um, this is we have a a guide that that we put out uh, recently. Um, and I saw we had a lot of school leaders on here, so I wanted to include this. This is our um, uh, tips for, for school leaders to, to bring AI in. So it was jointly produced by ISTE, ASCD, NASSP, NESP, and AASA. Uh, and it provides a, a series of questions about five pages long. We know you're busy. We know you're way too busy to read a, a 50 page uh, guide, although we have those too. Uh, but, but this just gives you some quick steps on some questions to ask, some tools to try when you're thinking about um, uh, how to bring AI into your building. I'm assuming just by knowing uh, the type of people that are members of uh, VACD and, 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 and VISTI, uh, you're, you're the leading edge on this. You're the type of people that people are looking towards for how to do this right. And so we have some questions and answers in here that could be really helpful for you as you're thinking about what, uh, what uh, uh, you know, how to help bring AI into, into schools. But what I wanted to share now is a set of skills. These are a handful of skills that I think are really critical for us to think about as we're trying to explore how we bring in uh, uh, AI uh, and uh, AI in our in our schools. Oh yeah, and and sorry, I I will put the link. Hang on, let me put the link to the guide right in there. Duh, I should have I should have uh, <laughs> should have done that already. Let me just pull it up here. It's just um, so or slash AI. There we go. Copy and paste. It uh, didn't work. I can do a lot of things, but copy and pasting is hard for me. There you go. Is there, oh yeah, or, or that's, thank you, Natasha, you're awesome. So isti.org slash AI goes to the main page, which has uh, has a link to it, or this link that um, Natasha put in there actually, um, uh, oops, uh, goes right to, yeah, uh, Gabby put it in there, goes right to the doc. So so feel free to grab, totally free, grab that if it's helpful, um, awesome. Uh, and uh, uh, I hope that will that will be uh, that will be useful. Um, but what I want to do is I want to share a little bit about some of how we should be thinking about um, uh, the skills that 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 we that we that young people need that we all need uh, older and younger people need as we're thinking about thriving in an AI world. And so I'll share those those quickly, and then and then again we'll we'll open it up for conversation. The first is. We have to understand how AI really works. It's really critical that we know what AI really is. I think it's, uh, you know, unfortunately, there's a, a, a you know, a sense of uh, that AI is, is magic, right? <laughs> and and uh, but the problem with magic is magic is is uncontrollable and it's mysterious. And AI is neither of those things. And so we want to make sure that we are understanding that 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 our that our students and us understand that AI is just a tool. 
And if we know how it works, there's nothing really mysterious about it. We did a study uh, a, a, it was a year or so ago. So it was a little bit before, you know, uh, the latest AI craze. Um, but we asked uh, educators and we had 80% of teachers that couldn't explain what AI was. Uh, right. And we weren't looking for like a very technical definition. We were just like, you know, robots didn't count. Right. It had to be more than that. And so we we know that there's this need to spend some time to really understand what is AI? What does it do? What does it not do? Because if we can understand that and if we can work with our uh, students to understand that, we are setting them up for success. And so you see, this is less about even using AI to support their learning, although that matters. This is about helping them know how to use AI as a tool for their future uh, future work. Just one quick story on this. Um, we had a couple of years ago, General Motors reached out to us and said, hey, we need your help. We need to build a course uh, for teachers on uh, on what AI is all about. And by the way, that's what led to that, that course that I showed you at the beginning with the, the you know, is it uh, the, the hot or not? Is it is it AI or is it not this activity? That course was actually originally um, developed in collaboration with, with General Motors. But when they called at first, I said, "Why? Why are you talking to us? Like we are, our job isn't to isn't to you know help you uh, you know solve your your uh, your your workforce issues. You know they were talking about workforce problems, and they said, no, what you don't understand is that we look at workforce challenges uh, a decade out. So today at General Motors, this was a couple of years ago, but you know today at General Motors, we are looking ten years out." And we're realizing that all of the jobs that we're going to be hiring for are going to involve some amount of AI, whether it's machines building cars that are AI, whether it's designing the cars that use AI, whether it's the tools to design the cars that are, are AI based. And we know that we're going to need to hire people that have AI skills. But when we look at what's being taught in schools, we're not seeing uh, much discussion about AI. Uh, and we know that in order to do that, we have to start with teachers. And so can we help get teachers trained on AI? And I thought, first of all, it made me really excited. I thought, what a what a thoughtful company to say, hey, we have this skill. We know we need it. The best way to help get there is to focus on supporting educators so that they can have these conversations about AI. But that is really uh, that is really critical. We really need to make sure um, that we are uh, understanding what AI is and what it isn't. So that's the first skill. Simple enough. The second skill that we need to do is think about how we're teaching the use of AI to support brainstorming. Um, I uh, I believe, I, so I used to work uh, for a company called IDEO. It's a company that created uh, design thinking, if you're familiar with that at, at some point. And there's companies that come and they spend uh, millions of dollars coming to IDEO to get them to uh, give help so design new, crazy, amazing products. A bunch of the products in your house are, are made by IDEO. And you don't know it because they have, you know, the, the they're white labeled, right? But but um, but but it's interesting when when we think about what uh, what value AI, uh, IDEO provided. Um, everybody thought that people there were just super geniuses, and then they were smart. They were smart people. Don't get me wrong. But really, what they did is they came up with far more possible solutions before they proposed something. So where you or I uh, on a team, we say, "Hey, we got to do something. Let's think about an option or two, and then we we go with it." IDEO comes up with a hundred. 200 possible solutions and then choose from there. And so they end up getting a lot more creative ideas. Well, that's great if you're IDEO and you have 500 designers working for you. But if you're you and me, you're a busy teacher, you're busy doing what, what you're doing, you don't have time for that. But if we can learn to outsource brainstorming to AI, that can be very powerful. AI, give me four different ways that I can give this feedback. Uh, AI, help me uh, think about an activity that I can do with my with my students. Uh, AI, uh, do a you know help uh, come up with a, a debate. Tell me the the opposing arguments of this of this viewpoint that I'm considering. Those are all really creative ways that we can help use this as a tool to support us. It's like our own personal brainstorming tool. And so knowing how to use AI to brainstorm is really is really critical. Um, the next skill, the third skill that I'll put that we need to do is we need to make sure that we're teaching uh, our young people, our students, how to work on hybrid teams. And by hybrid teams, I don't necessarily mean um, uh, uh, you know online or offline. I mean human or not human, right? One of the things we know, there's a lot we don't know, but one of the things that we know is that every one of your students is going to graduate and they're going to work on teams where not all members of their team are human. Uh, some will be working for AI. I was I mentioned I was in China the other day and I was interviewing somebody whose boss was was an AI bot. Uh, uh, some of them will be co-working with AI. Uh, most of the programmers I know currently uh, have have members of their team that are writing code that are AI. and some of them will have AI working for them. And so we'll have to figure out how how do we do that? What are decisions that would be uh, inappropriate to give to AI? 
uh, based on, you know, bias in the data, et cetera. And on the flip side, what are decisions that would be inappropriate not to give to AI because of the bias in the system, right? Because of our own bias, where, where in some cases AI actually makes, makes better decisions. And so as we think about how do we curate our own personal team um, of of uh, of AI supports. You know what what are what are the questions that we should be we should be asking. My fourth skill, and then I have one more after this, is we need to think about and teach what should be considered creation. So creation is interesting. We've had a very narrow definition of creation. It is something that I you know if I'm given a piece of paper, I, I write what's on the piece of paper, and it's considered my my, my work. Um, but, uh, but, but it's interesting that often what we're doing, even if we're writing it ourselves, we're just remashing, uh, ma mashing up ideas that we've been, been given. Some are original, but some are ideas that we've heard and taken in from other people. Um, it, uh, you know, it makes me think a lot about, uh, well, I, so, so, so one, one, one interesting example is, uh, is, is, is in art. Um, uh, we did a, um, an activity. So ISTE hosts a, uh, uh, a big event called ISTE Live every year. And this year we hosted an art competition and we asked students, it was all student art, students to bring examples of art that they had created using uh, generative AI. This was fascinating, you guys. We saw some amazing pieces of artwork that were created by these students. And, and by the way, again, if you, th if you think these weren't their creations, you are, you are crazy. They absolutely knew what these pieces were. They were talking about issues in their family and generations past and how there's this one on the left about how we engage with the earth around us and the impact that humans have on the world around us. These were all generated by AI, but with the prompts from these students. And so in this particular case, what, what happened was you had students who didn't have the dexterity of using the paintbrush, right? They didn't have the paintbrush skills to be able to do, uh, to, to make this art, but boy, they had it in their mind, what they wanted to be doing, right? And so what AI did, what generative AI did in this case was it helped them break down this barrier between what they, the story that they wanted to visualize and the fact that they didn't have the paintbrush skills to be able to visualize it and to be able to tell that story. So, so again, is that is that their work? Is that their creation? I, I would argue, and if you talk to any of the kids that talked about the work that they had created in the multiple iterations and how they had, uh, you know, directed the AI to do to do that to do that work, that it was very much their work. Now, if the skill that we are teaching is paintbrush dexterity, then this would not be, you know, then this would not be it, right? Uh, if we wanted to teach them, and it's not a bad thing to teach paintbrush dexterity, but if the goal is to be able to visualize, you know, to take a story that you have thought of and display it in a way that shares a message to somebody, then this is very much their work. And in fact, if anything, the paintbrush would just get in the way of, of assessing uh, or checking that, uh, that skill. And so, uh, so the last the last skill that I'll share that I think we need to think about is as as school leaders, I think we need to be very very thoughtful about teaching uh, what it means to be an amazing human, right? For for you know hundreds of thousands of years, we have had a monopoly on all higher order skills. We've never had to justify that we get to one to be the one to make a particular decision because nobody ever could come close. That now we have tools that can do things better than humans in some cases, uh, and not all certainly. Uh, and so, what's awesome is it allows us to double down on those uniquely human skills. Uh, the challenge, though, is I don't know that we know what uniquely human skills are. Right? I saw this on a building the other day. I thought it was funny. I thought I'd take a snapshot of it and share it with you here. But like, but right, like. In order to double down on uniquely human skills, we need to know what those what those skills are. Are those skills, uh, uh, you know, empathy? Are they creativity? Are they uh, are they are they love? Are they tolerance? Uh, are they civility? Whatever those are, we now have a great opportunity to double down on those because those are the skills that will never be replaced. But if we don't know what we're good at and better at than AI, then at that point, we're just kind of, you know, shooting in the dark and we're missing the chance to really, uh, to really learn those, uh, those skills. So let me pause there um, and let's go to, uh, uh, there's, there's a bunch of questions that have come in the chat um, that we can go through. And, and Chris, you tell me if we want to go back through some of those questions or, or grab some from the QA, whatever you want to do. Um, uh, happy to. We'll go in any direction anybody wants. Yep. All right. Sounds good. Rich, for, before we get into the questions, Richard, thank you so much. In a short period of time, 30 minutes, you took us 
through a whole lot there. So I, I, I definitely appreciate your time, your energy, your expertise, and then showing how ASCD and ISTE as an organization is leading the way, especially with the creation of Stretch AI. So I appreciate that. There's actually a question about Stretch AI. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, I've, I've tried to categorize the questions that I saw come through in the chat and then also the Q&A. So we'll, we'll start at the, uh, for lack of a better expression, the 30,000 foot view. Jonathan Adams from Australia is curious about the, the impact of AI on education, not in the next one to two years, but 10 years or even more from now, if, if you could speak to, uh, to that big of a forecast. Sure. I'm happy to make a guess. I will say it's a guess because if anybody tells you they know what it's going to be like down the road, they're lying because none of us know totally. But what I think is going to be really exciting, it's a great question. What I think is going to be really exciting is figuring out how we can be leveraging these tools to really superpower humans. And, and that's, that's, that's the key. And when it comes to learning, it's how are we using it to superpower the learning experience? Uh, one of the things that I always tried, and when I was a teacher, I always struggled with, was was customizing and tailoring learning to the needs of the individual students that, that I had. And I did a terrible job of it. I'll just admit it. I was teaching high school. I was a young teacher. I had, you know, five classes with 30 kids each. And I just did a terrible job of, of customizing it because it was, it, was, it was a huge amount of work. I think now, and especially thinking 10 years in the future, how these tools can help tee up more in more personalized learning experiences, uh, that could be really amazing. And I'm really excited about that. That's one. Let me give you another example. Uh, and this is one of the things we're looking at with, with Stretch AI. Uh, one of the challenges that we've seen before is there's a lot of research on how the brain works. We know a lot about how the brain works. Uh, what's interesting is there is not a high correlation between the research we know about how the brain works and practices that we see in schools. Uh, and, and there's a bunch of reasons for that. But one of them is that that research on how brains work uh, are in formats, usually in, in peer-reviewed journal articles, that are almost impossible to understand if you aren't you know, already in the field of, of neuroscience. And so they've done very little to help us. Um, I believe that AI has the ability to help translate some of that into forming better practices for learning. And so you could imagine a world where uh, where that coach, that AI coach for an educator, back you know when I was when I was teaching, it would have been awesome to be able to have it prompt me and say, "Hey, here are some strategies that you can use that will actually make you far more effective." Not about doing the job for you. It's about saying if you pull these people or do this activity or we notice these four students, if you can group them in this way, we could actually base that on really solid learning science. And and those are a couple of areas that I'm really excited about looking at the future of learning. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. The uh, next set of questions I'm going to try to lump into uh, one around, they're both, all four of them are really around policy. Uh, but the one from Dr. And I, I apologize, I'm going to do the best that I possibly can. So uh, Dr. Shahinaz Abdelrahman, uh, I apologize for not uh, having Ray. a chance to, to get that correct. But uh, what's the appropriate use for generative AI in research? And yeah. are there any policies for that? Yeah, there are some policies that are getting started. Most of the policies right now, frankly, you know, some 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 states and universities are rushing out the door to come up with policies, and and I get why. Uh, a lot of them are really short sighted. A lot of the policies right now are sort of block and tackle, probably driven by by a, a lawyer somewhere. Um, but unfortunately, they are they sort of miss the point on a lot of these things. So so there are some policies, but I think the real policies, the better policies, are coming. Those are ones that we will see after people take some time to explore. There's this knee jerk reaction, you know, here's here's AI, quick come up with our policy. But, but here's the thing. Sorry, I'm going on a tangent for a second, Chris. I promise I'm going to get to the answer. Just just hang with me, y'all. Okay, so so listen, here's the problem is remember at the beginning when I said I put the hundred dollar bill on the table and I, and I said how many of you can tell whether it's AI or not and nobody could so we're making these policies around a, an AI tool and we don't even know what tools have AI in, or, or don't in them and so it is always dangerous one thing I learned when I worked for the U.S. Department of Education it is always dangerous to make policies around technology right how many of you have a set of policies in your school around uh, VR or how many of you have a set of policies around APIs, right? APIs are really important. They're pulling data from one place or other. Do you have an API policy? How many of you have a policy around, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of, 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 a, of a type of technology, right? Of, of uh, 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 you know, JSON, uh, right? We don't generally make policies around technology because it doesn't matter. It, it's not about the type of technology. It's about what you're doing. 
And so my, I encourage you, and I would strongly encourage any of you that are working in, in, in schools in, in some way, institutions, is to say, what is the principle that we are focused on? Is the principle that we should uh, be transparent about how our work was generated? If so, great. It doesn't matter if it's Wikipedia or AI, we are going to be transparent about how the work was generated. It is a principle that we should fact check Yes, great. It doesn't matter if it was, uh, you know, Google or AI, which again is now one in the same, right? It, it, Chat GPT. So, so I would be very careful about AI policies, uh, and and really focus much more on what are the healthy conditions for tech use, what are the healthy conditions for learning, and then whether or not a tool supports that. That's what you focus on. Whether or not it, whether it uses AI or not doesn't doesn't really matter. Um, and so I think that's the key, uh, the, the key piece here. And, and really, um, when, when we talk about the use for, of generative AI, again, my question is, do, does your institution believe that you should be transparent about your sources? If so, then I would be transparent about where that, uh, where that, uh, where that information came from. Uh, and, and that's what we always go down to is what's the principle, regardless of what flavor of technology we use to get there. So we're going to follow that that train of, of thought into policy. We actually have two that I think are getting at the same thing, and they're in the q and I'm, I'm not going to read um, both of them fully. It's from Jennifer okay. Wood and um, Evan Zundel right. in, uh, in the in the Q&A, but it, it's really around uh, safety for students and the 13 and under and the parental permission, yes. uh, security becoming more and more um, important. Has... ASCD and ISTE been approached to address these privacy concerns. Um, yeah. Yes. So, so let me tell you, I mean, answer that on two sides. So one is we are working, we do work closely, as you know, we're, we're sort of the, uh, we, sometimes we, we're jokingly called the, the uh, ed tech Switzerland, because we try to be a broker between the education community and uh, the tech community. And so we have relationships with Microsoft, we have relationships with uh, OpenAI, and we're working, you know, working with them on, on some of these things. But in the meantime, one of the things that's really critical is, again, we, it's back to this previous answer. A lot of people are saying, well, we should have a policy on under 13 use of you know, uh, data with, with AI. No, if we have, a, if we have, if we have a, 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 a process in place that reviews uh, um, you know, data privacy issues, it doesn't matter what the tool is. Any tool that is not adhering to good data privacy that is not intended for a kid under under 13 shouldn't be used that is not unique to ai right so so that makes sense so so it's funny we've had schools that have uh, that have said well we have to very quickly say you know ai that is un that you know is not for kids under 13 and, and and i would say well so what if i come up with a tool that isn't using ai but it's just totally misusing students data that's also a problem. So keep it keep it focused on the principles. In a school district, you want to say we review any tools that we use with kids. We're going to review and make sure that they are having good, solid data principles. And if they are and they're appropriate for kids at a certain age level, great. If not, doesn't matter whether it's AI. Not appropriate to be put in front of kids. Now there are lots of tools that are coming out in place um, that uh, uh, that are that are going to that are are starting to be aimed more for younger audiences. So so you know that the Chat GPT tool is not under thirteen. It is it is not uh, not designed for for that younger audience. But there are that are coming. Um, at the end of the day, though, I think the far more useful um, uh, audience for for these tools is us, the educators, the, the adults in the system. Help coach us. Help us be awesome. Help me be more creative and more, um, uh, uh, you know, push my training and my thinking. Uh, and and then and then down the road, as as more and more of these bespoke tools are ready to be used with kids at a younger age, then we could certainly consider uh, using it with them. So I'm gonna we're gonna pull on that thread just a little bit more. Um, and and Joe Feingold in the Q and A asked about infusing ethics into our work to best prepare the future uh, AI developers and the AI trainers. So as AI begins to take off, there we will develop the developers. Uh, yes. But how do we infuse ethics into our work as this uh, really does become ubiquitous? This that I'm so I'm so glad to hear that 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 was my whole point of that whole of all those skills and like we need to know how to use this and what makes us good humans. That's my point is that you all you all are building you are creating the future builders of these tools. And so what we need to be thinking about is as our jobs really at the end of the day uh, among all kinds of other things, but is is we are the creators of the future uh, designers of these tools. And we don't want to be building users of AI. We want to be thinking about building the builders of next generation AI. Now that's easy to say, 
Uh, doing that is hard. I don't have a simple answer, but it starts with exploring and understanding, uh, thinking about using tech as a tool for good. You mentioned in the bio at the beginning, the book that I wrote is called Digital for Good. And my whole point is that when we think about using technology in, in education, um, often we start from a, a negative standpoint, right? Here's some of you probably are in schools that have uh, an acceptable use guide. And it says, here are all the things not to do with technology. Don't cheat, don't be a jerk and don't share your password and don't, you know, all the, all the don'ts, right? Um, but uh, but really what we want to do is we want to help students, young people practice using technology to be problem solvers and creators and builders and collaborators and friends in virtual spaces. And so, so we need to flip those don'ts. And instead of saying, here's all the things not to do with technology, I would love to walk into a school. And there are some schools that are doing this, by the way. I would love to walk into a school and it has, here's a list of all of the expectations. Here are all the do's of technology. We expect you to use it to fact check. We expect you to use it to solve problems. We expect you to use it to help collaborate with other people and bring new ideas to class. And that's where we start. We start by helping set the conditions, help them understand that these tools that we carry in our pockets, these things, these are devices that help solve problems in our school, in our families, in our communities. And if we can start practicing that, that makes them much, much more powerful uh, designers of the future of the tools that we'll use. Again, whether it's using AI or not, it will help create tools that will be problem solving tools for the future. Wow, nice. Thank you for that, uh, Richard. And so I think the last one that I was able to catch, and if I missed anyone's question, please redrop it. But we had two people ask this, and there was a fury of activity when you demoed Stretch AI. The question is timeline for release on Stretch AI. Uh, working as fast as we can on it. Um, what I would say, by the way, if anybody, and I saw a couple people said that they did this, if you go to that isti.org slash AI page, uh, you can put your name in if you want to be uh, part of the beta test and we'll, we're opening it up to some more uh, some more people. Um, I, I don't know. I hope I hope soon. We want to make sure that it's working right. Uh, we already are having some some teachers use it and we'll, we'll continue to expand, expand that. Um, so I, I'm sorry, I can't give you a better answer, but we want to make sure we're doing it responsibly and putting out a tool that's really helpful. So put your name in if you want to be part of the training, the beta test, help us train the puppy. Uh, you can uh, you can definitely uh, uh, get into to do that. We would love to love to do that. Um, uh, by the way, can I just mention? So there's some there's some great some great comments in the chat here, um, and and I think there's some uh, just some really. I wish we could have had a chance to to talk about uh, about all of them. But one of the things that I think is really critical that I'll just mention is um, making sure as educators you are taking time to explore. AI tools uh, as yourself. And not just chat, if, if you've just explored chat GPT, great time to explore five new ones. Uh, and there's there's so many, and I wanna be careful, you know, sharing uh, names of any of these things. We're not, I'm not endorsing any of them, but you know, there are tools like uh, the, the, the visual generation tools, like the ones that those kids use to make those, um, uh, those the, the artwork, uh, Stable Diffusion, uh, Dolly, those are some some different tools for that. Magic School AI and EduAid, those are both uh, interesting um, uh, tools that help with lesson planning. School AI uh, is a really interesting one. There's some great tools that uh, um, help uh, with um, uh, summarizing. You, you can give them text and it will summarize the text and then read it back to you as a human. Uh, so you can take a whole document. My, my daughter actually was in college did this whole long reading assignment. It was too long for her to read. She dropped it into AI and said, summarize it to me and explain it to me. And a, and a, a, a person, a person looking thing showed up and said, let me explain this document to you. And it read it through in five minutes. And she got at least the gist of, of what she otherwise wouldn't have even had a chance to read. So just taking some time to explore. Don't feel like you have to solve all the world's problems right now. Just explore take, have fun. It's fun. Try to find some things that surprise you because they're working better than you expected. Try to find some things that work worse than you expected. And that's all part of you just getting comfortable with these tools. And so, so if you haven't just spend some time kicking the tires on them and, and certainly give, you know, uh, give feedback and share what's working with those other, with the others around you in, in, uh, in, in your buildings for those of you that are in schools. I, I, Richard, I appreciate that so much. We we do have uh, nine minutes left for what's scheduled, but we're 
we're going to cap it now uh, because someone famously uh, once told me that if you let them out early, they'll love you forever. If you keep ah. them one minute over, you're you're absolutely cooked. But I'm taking away so much from this just just a, a 51 minute conversation with you and and, and sharing that I'm, I'm taking away like number one, explore the tools, like know exactly what it is that that you're uh, before you even start to think about policy or, or creating structures and rules, understand the tool first and, and, and get in there and explore. Lore. I, I love the idea of uh, when developing the policy, focus on the principle that you're developing the policy around because nine times, and this, this was my other takeaway, 99 times out of 100, you already have a policy for that principle. And so just follow the policy that you have developed. The tools are going to change and be That's and, right. And That's right. Out. Um, and then finally, I, I love, I've always loved this concept, but you, you really did hammer at home, especially when we're talking about AI in our schools avoid the can'ts, the no's and the don'ts, and instead focus on the expectations. Like let this, let the, let the children and the educators know where the sandbox is and then let them play in the sandbox. So I, I appreciate all of that. Um, as we say goodbye, I'm seeing a lot of folks that are, are, are sending a lot of thank yous. I'm not seeing any more questions. If you wanted to give us one more word before we turn it over to Rod to say good, good night, um, and, and then we will say good night. So we'll give you the final word. And then Rod, if you can, if you could send us on our way. I, I thank you for giving me the final word. I, and, and my final word actually is, is going to have, you know, very little to do with AI. Uh, in fact, nothing to do with AI. But I I just want to take a moment to just share how incredibly grateful I am for the group of people that are on this call. Looking at the roles that you have, looking at what you do, you are amazing people and you are doing incredibly important work right now in schools. And so I, I just, with, with the, at the bottom of my heart, I just want to thank you for your service. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for being creative. If we're going to get AI right, it's because your fingerprints are going to be all all over it. And so, so whatever you can do to just keep that creativity going, keep, uh, keep being the leaders in, in your space. I, I, you just have my, 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 my gratitude and thank you for your heroic work. Awesome. Thank you. All right, Rod, it's, it's yours to take us home, man. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you again, Richard, for your, your time and, and all that you added to this, this evening's conversation. Uh, there were three this fall, three different conversations that the Commonwealth Learning Partnership and VIFTI and other partners hosted this fall. If you go back to the registration link where you where you landed into this space, all three recordings from this fall series will be available so that you can review those. And if you need to share those out with others, they are, we have converted those to YouTube links so they can be shared out to others who weren't able to attend. The exciting thing going forward is we're going to do the same thing in the spring with three more opportunities to sit down with experts in the field and have these AI conversations so that we can explore some of these solutions, we can learn a little bit more about it, and we can make some really good decisions and better yet, ask some really good questions of those around us. So I'd like to thank you all for joining us tonight and hope that you'll sign up for our sessions in the spring. Thank you for being here.